Welcome to the 2020 Child Care Food Program Annual Workshop. Child Care Food Program. The Child Care Food Program plays an important role to help providers serve nutritious meals and snacks to children in their care because young children need nutritious meals for healthy development. The objective of the program is to improve the diets of children under 13 years of age by providing nutritious, well-balanced meals. In this workshop, we will discuss meal pattern, meal counts, record keeping requirement, claim submission and review procedure, reimbursement system, the monitoring visits, some reminders, civil rights, and there will be a short quiz after. First, we will discuss the infant meal pattern. All infants in their daycare home must be enrolled. Parents or guardians need to be notified that an iron-fortified infant formula is offered at no charge. Parents or guardians can decline the provider's formula by signing a decline form provided by the sponsor. Parents or guardians may provide only one component for a reimbursable meal. Example, parent provide breast milk. Providers must provide remaining components. Please make sure to follow the infant meal pattern. Infants between 6 months to 11 months must be served all three components for breakfast, lunch, and supper. Milk. 1% unflavored milk is served to all children 2 years of age and older. Whole unflavored milk is served to children 12 to 23 months old. 2% milk is not a credible milk. Fruit juices are not a credible component as well. Switching immediately from whole milk to low-fat or fat-free milk when a child turns 2 years old may be challenging. The USDA allows 24 to 25 month olds a one month transition period. Grains. Limit meat, meat substitutions for the entire grain component on the breakfast menu to no more than three times a week. Whole grains. The USDA CACFP requires that at least one serving of grain contains a whole grain component. Grains that meet the whole grain rich component are grains that contain at least 50% whole grain and the remaining grain in the food that are enriched, or 100% whole grain. Identifying whole grain rich. 1. Food is labeled 100% whole wheat and meets the FDA standard of identity. 2. If the product is found on any state agency's WIC list. 3. FDA statement. Diets rich in whole grain food and other plant foods and low in fat, saturated fat, and cholesterol may reduce the risk of heart disease and some cancers. 4. Diets rich in whole grain foods and other plant foods and low in saturated fat and cholesterol may help reduce the risk of heart disease. 4. The rule of 3. The first ingredient must be whole grain, the next two grain ingredients must be whole grains, enriched grains, bran, or germ. 5. Food meets the whole grain rich criteria under the National School Lunch Program. Or 6. Proper documentation from a manufacturer or standardized recipe can demonstrate that whole grains are the primary grain ingredient by weight. These are some samples of credible whole grain snacks. Whole grains must be 100% whole grain. Labels that say 6 grams of whole grain, 8 grams of whole grain are not 100% whole grain and therefore not a credible whole grain. To be credited for the whole grain component, please make sure to change the status of is this whole grain rich to yes as this video shows. Yogurt. The requirement for yogurt must contain no more than 23 grams of sugar per 6 ounces. If the yogurt is on the WIC authorized foods list shopping guide, the yogurt meets the sugar level. Make sure to keep containers till the end of the day or have a photocopy posted on the refrigerator. To calculate the level of sugar in yogurt, first use the nutrition fact label to find the serving size in ounces or grams. Find the sugar line, look at the number of grams next to sugars. Use the serving size identified in step 1 to find the serving size of your yogurt in the table below. In the table, look at the number to the right of the serving size amount under the sugars column. If your yogurt has that amount of sugar or less, the yogurt meets the sugar requirement. Does the yogurt above meet the sugar requirement? Cereal. Breakfast cereals must contain no more than 6 grams of sugar per dry ounce. Keep food package label ingredient list nutrition facts label of all cereals being served. If the breakfast cereals on the women, infants, and children supplement nutrition program authorized food list shopping guide, the cereal meets the sugar level. To calculate the sugar level in cereals, first, 
Use the nutrition facts label to find the serving size in grams of the cereal. Find the sugar line. Look at the number of grams next to sugars. Use the serving size identified in step one to find the serving size of your cereal in the table below. In the table, look at the number to the right of the serving size amount under the sugars column. If your cereal has that amount of sugar or less, your cereal meets the sugar requirement. Does the cereal above meet the sugar requirement? Tofu. Tofu is a reimbursable meat, meat alternative component. It must be commercially prepared. It must be easily recognizable as a meat substitute, for example, tofu chunks in a stir fry. It must contain at least 5 grams of protein per 2.2 ounces, which is the equivalent to one fourth of a cup. Meats and meat alternatives. Processed meat and meat alternatives such as fish sticks and chicken nuggets must have a CN label or a PFS, known as a product formulation statement, signed by the manufacturer, which verifies the product's contribution to the meal pattern requirement. Try not to throw labels away until the end of the day. Photocopy labels and post it on the refrigerator, or take a picture of any labels on a smartphone. Please follow the meal pattern for all children. For breakfast, three components must be served. Milk vegetable, fruit, or both, and a grain. For lunch and supper, all five components must be served. Milk, a meat, meat alternative, vegetable, fruit, and a grain. For a snack, any two of the five components must be served. Meal count. Only claim children who have received a meal or snack. Take caution when clicking each child's name in kid care. Meal counts and menus must be posted by 10 p.m. daily. Daily meal worksheet must be done only when there is a technical issue notified by Minute Menu and turned in the morning after. To print the daily meal worksheet, go to Reports, Worksheet, Daily Meal Worksheet, Run, and Print. Meal times and spacing. Breakfast must be served before 8.45 a.m. Lunch between the hours of 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Dinner between the hours of 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Spacing of major meals. Breakfast to lunch and lunch to dinner must have a three hour gap from beginning of meal to meal. Spacing of major meal and snack. Breakfast to a.m. snack, a.m. snack to lunch, lunch to p.m. snack, p.m. snack to dinner must have a two hour gap from beginning of meal to snack or snack to meal. Providers must serve meals as scheduled. Serving earlier without any notice of meal will be disallowed. If meal times change, inform KGAM staff as soon as possible. All changes need to be made to CDE, the California Department of Education. Make sure all children are served, offered the same food, and all components are served together. Record keeping and requirements. Providers must have a copy of each child's enrollment form. All children in daycare must be enrolled. Claim food and attendance can be saved or printed after claim is submitted to KFAM each month. Copy of the current license fee payment. Copy of permanent agreement between a sponsor and a daycare home provider. Copy of monitoring visit, which can be printed from kid care. Medical forms for any children. Decline forms for children in the daycare not participating in the food program. And nutrition fact labels for cereals, yogurt, and whole grains. All records must be kept three years plus current. Here is a short video on how you can save or print the claimed foods and attendance. Claim Submission and Review Procedure Providers must submit their monthly claim online using kid care by the third of each month for timely filing. Documents such as CIF, enrollment forms, must be submitted to KFAM CCFP office by the third of each month. CCFP staff works on online claims received and other documents according to the policy and regulation. 
Received claims will be submitted to the CDE by the due date. Air reports and current month CIF will be mailed out to each provider. Reimbursement system. KFAM submits claims to CDE and MSB each month on or before the due date according to the annual contract with CDE. CDE has 45 days or longer to work and process claims sent by KFAM. Once KFAM receives a reimbursement check from the state, our finance manager deposits the check from the state and starts preparing reimbursement checks for each provider. KFAM must send out reimbursement checks within five working days from the receipt of the reimbursement check from the state. So all providers, please be patient. Monitoring visits. Three unannounced monitoring visits will be done each year. Monitoring visits are done during the provider's hours of operation. Monitor will observe safety, children and food, appropriate portions and or quality of meals, make sure record keeping is up to date, capacity of license, providers must stay within their licensed capacity, CN label, make sure appropriate yogurt, milk, cereal, and whole grain is served. Block claims. A block claim is defined as a claim for reimbursement on which the number of meals claimed for one or more meal type is identical for 15 consecutive days within a claiming period. Please make sure 1% or fat-free milk is served to children two years old and older. During the pandemic, all monitoring visits will be done virtually using Zoom. One virtual visit will be announced and one will be unannounced and the provider will be notified 10 to 15 minutes before a meal. Or house maids children who are part of the economic unit. Meal to the provider's own children may only be reimbursed if the following three conditions exist. The provider's children must be enrolled and be participating in the child care food program during the time of the meal service. The other enrolled non-resident children must be present and participate in the same meal service. The daycare home sponsor has a current eligibility document on file for establishing income or categorical eligibility for the provider's household or foster child children, which is a meal benefit form. Tier 2 providers do not qualify to claim their own children. Child must be enrolled as not participating in the food program and the decline form must be submitted. License capacity for six children. In a small family child care home whose license capacity is for six children, the following capacity ratios apply. Four infants only, between the ages of zero to 24 months. Three infants and three older children over the age of 24 months. Two infants and four older children over the age of 24 months one infant and five older children over the age of 24 months, six older children all over the age of 24 months. License capacity for eight children. In a small family child care home whose license capacity is for eight children, the following capacity ratios apply. Two infants and six older children over the age of 24 months, one child must be at least six years old and one child must be enrolled in kindergarten. One infant and seven older children over the age of 24 months, one child must be at least six years old and one child must be enrolled in kindergarten. Eight older children over the age of 24 months, one must be at least age six, and one must be enrolled in kindergarten. License capacity for 12 children. In a small family child care home whose license capacity is for 12 children, the following capacity ratios apply. Four infants and eight older children over the age of 24 months with a qualified assistant. Three infants and nine older children over the age of 24 months with a qualified assistant. Two infants and 10 older children over the age of 24 months with a qualified assistant. One infant and 11 older children over the age of 24 months with a qualified assistant. 12 older children over the age of 24 months with a qualified assistant. License capacity for 14 children. In a large family child care home whose license capacity is for 14 children, the following capacity ratios apply. Three infants and 11 older children over the age of 24 months. One of the children must be at least age six and one child enrolled in kindergarten with a qualified assistant, landlord permission, and parent notification. Two infants and 12 older children over the age of 24 months. One of the children must be at least age six and one child enrolled in kindergarten with a qualified assistant, landlord permission, and parent notification. One infant and 13 older children over the age of 24 months. One of the children must be at least age six and one child enrolled in kindergarten with a qualified assistant, landlord permission, and parent notification. 14 older children over the age of 24 months. One of the children must be at least age six and one child enrolled in kindergarten with a qualified assistant, landlord permission, and parent notification. October Renewal. 
All enrollment forms expire September 30th of each year. Any new child enrolled in the month of September, enrollment form expires September 30th. An example, child enrolled September 20th, this enrollment form will expire September 30th and a new enrollment form dated October 1st will be required. All renewed enrollment forms must be submitted by October 5th to receive October reimbursement on time. KFAM will send copies before October 1st of each month. Any new child enrolled after copies are sent, providers are responsible to print from KidCare and submit the original to KFAM. KFAM is not responsible for any unsubmitted renewal forms. Please make sure to keep a copy of all enrollment forms before submitting the original to KFAM. Not home policy. If provider and children are not present at daycare without notice, all meals for the day will be disallowed. Monitor will revisit the home. Provider must notify agency when daycare is closed and or mark closed for business on KidCare calendar. If provider has an assistant, assistant must be trained regarding the food program. Assistants must know meal pattern, portions, and have access to all records. Household contact. Household contacts can be made by a sponsor agency staff to a parent or legal guardian of a child enrolled in the daycare to verify attendance and enrollment of a child. Sponsoring organization will contact the household when one or more of the followings are noted. Meal counts are inconsistent with the attendance records. Prior five day meal counts are higher than the attendance on the day of the monitoring visit. A large evening or holiday meal and snack are claimed for reimbursement. Meals served and claimed do not correspond to the information on the enrollment. Some common errors on the OER each month are pending child. Please mail in all enrollment forms as soon as they are signed. Do not exceed the two meals and one snack or two snacks and one meal. Child file indicates the child doesn't normally attend day of week or given meal. Please let me know if the child's schedule needs to be updated. Do not go over capacity for preschoolers or infants. School age child served a meal when should have been in school. Remember to add no school on kid care calendar for school age children present in the daycare during vacation and holidays. This applies during the pandemic when children will be learning from home. To use the draggable event no school for school age children, go to calendar, click child, select the child, click non-infants, choose the school age child, and drag no school on the day they are present. Civil rights. Discrimination based on race, ethnicity, ancestry and color, religion, sex, sexual orientation, and gender identity, national origin, age, marital status, and domestic partner status or disability is prohibited. The civil rights officer at KFAM is Catherine Young. Please refer to CACFP 35 Civil Rights Complaint Procedures, which will be inside the folder you will be receiving. Civil Rights Procedure for Handling Complaints All complaints should be brought to KFAM CCFP, Manager, Staff, or Executive Director, preferably in writing and as soon as possible. Complaints can also be brought directly to EEOC or Department of Fair Employment and Housing. See Justice for All poster available in the office. KFAM Civil Rights Officer is the Executive Director. KFAM will immediately conduct an investigation. Any findings will result in immediate remedial action and responsible employees may be subject to disciplinary action. KFAM will not retaliate against anyone who files a complaint regardless of the findings. Here are some helpful resources and websites which will be available in your workshop folder. To obtain your 2019 annual training certificate, follow the link to take the quiz. All providers that have taken the quiz and passed, a certificate and workshop folder will be mailed to the provider's home. Providers that fail to take the quiz will need to come to the Korean American Family Services Office for training. For any questions or comments, please contact Christine Chu, Child Care Food Program Home Manager, by phone or email.